Good guys today is monday november the 7th 2022 and this is going to be part three in the series that i'm doing regarding the initial complaint filed in the kanika jenkins case because um you won't understand what she's asking for if you don't understand that initial court filing you won't understand if she got justice and so i think that initial court filing is so very important so we're just going to pick up where we left off and keep it moving. And we were on number 47. This document is just a tad bit crooked. Um, that's not my fault. That's the way it was scanned in. So I'm just doing the best that uh, I can with this. But it, number 47 says, at all pertinent times, employees and or agents of Crown Plaza defendants and defendant capital security had a duty to act when they were put on notice of plaintiff's decedent's, Kanika Jenkins, disappearance and undertook the responsibility to act as existed at the time. What they're saying there is that Crown Plaza, capital security, and their employees of both of them had a duty to act when they found out Kanika Jenkins had disappeared. That was their responsibility to act on that. Number 48, had Crown Plaza defendants and employees and or agents of defendant capital security checked the surveillance footage when they undertook the duty to do so, they would have found plaintiffs to seat at Kanika Jenkins in a timely fashion and prevented her death. So what they're saying there is had Crown Plaza, their employees, or Capital Security and their employees, did what they were supposed to do, which was check that surveillance footage, they would have found Kanika in a timely fashion and saved her life. Number 49. Had Crown Plaza defendants and employees and or agents of defendant Capital Security properly intervened when they observed plaintiff's decedent visibly disoriented, confused, and lost within their premises, they would have prevented her from entering the abandoned kitchen and prevented her death. So they took it a step farther. They said, no. Had you guys, hotel and security, had you guys acted and intervened when you saw that Kanik was visibly disoriented and confused and lost, then you would have been able to stop her from going into that kitchen and you most certainly would have prevented her death. Number 50. Had Crown Plaza defendants properly secured the unused kitchen, they would have prevented plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins from entering the abandoned kitchen and thereby prevented her death. Now that's just self-explanatory. Had they secured the kitchen, we wouldn't have been here at all. 51. Had Crown Plaza defendants properly, let me retake that, had Crown Plaza defendants provided adequate security, they would have intervened quickly, appropriately, and correctly to the dangerous conditions created in the subject hotel room. They would have prevented plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins from becoming disoriented and distressed. What they're saying there is had the Crown Plaza had adequate security, competent security, they would have immediately jumped in, corrected the craziness that was going on in room 926, and therefore, Kanika Jenkins would have never become disoriented and distressed in the first place. Number 52. As a direct and proximate result of the negligence of Crown Plaza defendants, Plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, was seriously, painfully, and permanently hurt and injured as her body shut down and she froze to death. So, there they lay it out. As a result of the Crown Plaza's lack of actions, 
lack of competent employees, lack of hiring competent security. Kanika Jenkins would have never been permanently hurt as her body shut down and she froze to death, according to the medical examiner. Now, you have to understand, they're working with the paperwork they've been given, and that's what the medical examiner says. 53. But as a direct and proximate result of the above described actions, plaintiff's decedent, Kanika Jenkins, and her estate suffered damages, including, but not limited to, A. Conscious physical pain and suffering and death. B. Severe emotional injuries. C. Mental anguish. D. Mortification and humiliation. C. Embarrassment and denial of social pleasures. F. Economic loss, including wage loss. G. Medical expenses past, present, and future. H. Exemplary damages. I. Punitive damages. J. Attorney fees and costs. K. Loss of love, society, and companionship. L. Reasonable funeral and burial expenses. M. Loss of gifts, gra gratuities, and other items of economic value. And N. All other damages allowed by law. Now, I think most of these are pretty self-explanatory, but I will go over um, the others. Just conscious physical pain and suffering and death. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. Severe emotional injuries should also be self-explanatory. Mental anguish. Um, mortification and humiliation. I want to speak on that. Because mortification refers to the feelings um, of shame or... Uh, wounded pride, embarrassment that comes after an accident, incident, or anything such as that. It's where a person feels ashamed or extremely embarrassed after a life-changing event. And Miss um, Teresa certainly um, experienced that. And then as far as the humiliation, it's, you know, basic self-explanatory on that, but... Um, Feeling disgraced, uh, belittled, made to look foolish after an accident, incident, or altercation. And, and both of both of those um, certainly are what Miss Teresa has, has went through. Uh, and they went on to say embarrassment and denial of social pleasures. Um, economic loss, because Kanika is no longer here, she can no longer work or have any type of contribution to the family so that is a wage loss which equals an economic loss for the family uh, medical expenses past present and future that should all be self-explanatory and then we're going to get into the um, exemplary damages and those are damages that are awarded in lawsuits when the defendants willful acts were malicious, violent, oppressive, fraudulent, wanton, or grossly reckless. Okay? That's when you'll see exemplary damages. Um, it's more, it's, it's really more to deter um, others from doing such stuff. Um, because of the horrible nature of this, incident um, it's sad to say but exemplary damages are not often awarded um, you have to really prove that okay uh, punitive damages I think we're pretty self-explanatory that's um, that's what you think of normally when you think of a lawsuit attorneys fees and costs this isn't free um, Miss Teresa is going to have to pay attorney fees. Loss of love, society, and companionship. That's self-explanatory as well. Uh, reasonable funeral and burial expenses. That needs to be paid. Should be paid. 
loss of gri gifts, gratuities, and other items of economic value. All other damages allowed by law. So they're trying to cover all of their bases. But a lot of these are pain and suffering um, type of things. And, you know, just having the mere anxiety, um, worry, nervousness, unease. It's a type of pain and suffering. And if a person exhibits these symptoms, uh, they can ask for to be reward, awarded for those, okay? Uh, depression, uh, the loss of companionship, um, someone being depraved of their child, um, the loss of being able to show their child affection, care, and security. That's what's meant by that. Um, emotional distress is, um, you know, severe anguish, sadness, fury as a result of this incident. Um, you know, there's so many things that could have been listed here. And, and I think that last letter in, all other damages allowed by law, they covered it all with that, uh, just in case they had left anything out. Now, number 54. Crown Plaza defendants are vicariously liable under the doctrine of respondeat superior for all negligent acts committed by their employees and or agents when acting within the course and scope of their employment. So what that's saying is that the Crown Plaza, the hotel, is liable because their employees and or their agents perform negligent acts during the scope of their employment there. So that makes them liable. Wherefore, plaintiff respectfully requests that this honorable court enter a judgment in favor of plaintiff and against the defendants in excess of $50 million, exclusive of cost, interest, and attorney fees. All right. Now it gets into count two. Negligence and or gross negligence, defendant Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant. So this is going to deal with Murray Brothers Murray Brothers Caddyshack Restaurant. 55. Plaintiff's decedent re-alleges and reasserts all previously enumerated paragraphs as though fully set forth herein. So what that's saying is that all, everything that they've said so far, um, they are saying again in regards to Murray Brothers Caddyshack. Number 56. At all pertinent times herein, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant was renting the kosher kitchen from the Crown Plaza defendants. 57. At all pertinent times herein, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to maintain a safe premises. So, they were renting the kosher kitchen from the hotel, and beings that they were renting that, they owed a duty to maintain that area as safe. Number 58. At all pertinent times relevant herein, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to warn of or otherwise take reasonable steps to protect the general public, its business invitees, guests, and plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins in particular regarding the state of the premises or acts done or omitted on them. What they're saying is that the Caddyshack had a duty to warn the public, to warn guests, to warn business invitees, and specifically Kanika Jenkins regarding the state of that kitchen or lack thereof. 59. At all times relevant here too, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to warn their agents and or employees of unreasonable risks and dangers in their leased premises. So the Caddyshack had a duty to warn about the dangers and risks in the leased kitchen. Number 60. At all pertinent times here too, herein, defendant's Caddyshack Restaurant 
a duty to the general public, its business invitees, guests, and plaintiffs to see Kanika Jenkins. In particular, maintain a safe premises. So the Caddyshack had a duty to the general public, anyone they invited there for business, hotel guests, and specifically Kanika Jenkins to maintain safe premises. And I'm going to tell you guys that everything that they said about the Crown Plaza, they are now saying in count two about the Caddyshack. So it's just essentially changing the names. Um, it's the same thing. Number 61, at all pertinent times relevant herein, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to the general public, its business invitees, guests, and plaintiffs, decedent Kanika Jenkins in particular, to warn of latent defects of dangers within their leased premises, namely the abandoned kitchen. So they had a duty to the general public, anyone they invited there, and specifically to Kanika Jenkins, to warn about the defects and dangers of that kitchen that they leased from the Crown Plaza. 62. At all times relevant, Defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed their business invitees, guests, and plaintiffs to see at Kanika Jenkins in particular a duty to exercise reasonable care to ensure that services undertaken by their food service providers were done so in a manner so as to not inflict injury upon others. So they're saying that Caddyshack had a reasonable expectation, a duty to exercise reasonable care to make sure that their food service providers didn't inflict any kind of injury upon others. Number 63, at all times relevant, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to the general public, its business invitees, guests, and plaintiffs to see at Kanika Jenkins in particular, to properly supervise, train, and hire its personnel who were working at their company at the leased premises. <laughs> um, and number 64. <laughs> at all times relevant here too, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to their business invitees, guests and plaintiffs to see Kanika Jenkins in particular to maintain policies and or procedures so as to prevent injury upon others when supervising and or using their premises. Like I said, this is just a repeat of what they said about Crown Plaza. Number 65. At all pertinent times relevant here too, defendant Caddyshack Restaurant owed a duty to the general public, its business invitees, guests and plaintiffs to see at Kanika Jenkins in particular to maintain safe premises for the patrons. Number 66 is where they're going to get into exactly um, what the Caddyshack was negligent in. The defendant Caddyshack restaurant was negligent and or grossly negligent and responsible for A. Failing to secure areas which should have been closed off to the general public. B, failing to secure areas restricted to employees only. C, failing to maintain proper signage. D, failing to warn of a dangerous condition. E, maintaining a defective and faulty freezer. F, improperly allowing a dangerously designed freezer area to remain in operation, unsupervised and open to the public. G, Failing to maintain the latch and entry system to their kitchen area. H. Failing to secure an area otherwise inherently dangerous. I. Failing to hire, manage, supervise, and train employees and or agents who were properly trained not to negligently disregard dangers to the general public. J. Failing to hire, manage, supervise, and train employees and or agents who were competent. K. Failing to hire food service providers who are competent and capable of acting reasonably under the circumstances. L. Failing to enforce existing policies and procedures to prevent the conduct described herein and or failing to promulgate sufficient policies to prevent the occurrence alleged herein. M. 
failing to adopt proper procedures for their employees and personnel, and N, failing to properly and adequately train its staff with relation to safety procedures of personnel-only areas. So again, all of the same things that they were alleging from the hotel. Um, you know, the danger of having a kitchen that was inoperable without it being locked. Um, it was accessible pretty much from anybody. Um, the signage wasn't there. They didn't hire staff that knew what the hell they were doing. Uh, the food service providers, it went from the whole gamut. They've alleged it against the Caddyshack as well. 67. At all pertinent times, employees and or agents of Defendant Caddyshack Restaurant had a duty to properly secure the unused kitchen and ensure the safe and proper management of all supplies within the kitchen. So they're saying that the Caddyshack had a duty to secure that kitchen and ensure that the kitchen and all of its supplies were safe. 68. Had Defendant Caddyshack Restaurant properly secured the unused kitchen, they would have prevented plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins from entering the abandoned kitchen and prevented her death. Well, that's a fact. Because had Caddyshack secured that door, Kanika Jenkins would have never went wandering in there. But a whole lot of other negligence had to happen before it even got to that point in the negligence. 69. Had Defendant Caddyshack Restaurant ensured the equipment not in use, such as the abandoned freezer, was properly turned off and managed, plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins would not have frozen to death. 70. As a direct and proximate result of the negligence of Defendant Caddyshack Restaurant, plaintiff's decedent Kanika Jenkins was seriously, painfully, and permanently hurt and injured as her body shut down and froze to death. And I think I'm going to end this video right here and pick back up on the next video. Thanks for watching, guys.